Well, hello, scrappers, and welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope a lot of you have had the chance to look at the series of videos I did on processing the chips that Nick sent me in a, a mail call video I got a while back. I'll put a link to the where I process Nick's chips up in the upper right corner, and you can check that out if you haven't seen it already. Nick sent me a little over three kilos of... Um, mixed miscellaneous IC chips and I processed them and I only got one gram of gold out of them and a little over two grams of silver and the problem I was pretty sure was that they were they were old dual inline packaged chips which really don't contain very much gold so today we're going to try something a little different I got some other chips here these are um, flash RAM 16 megabit flash RAM chips in a much more modern package it's a very tiny I'll give you a close-up look at it. Anyway, I've got two big bags of these chips here. So let's weigh these up and see how many we've got. So we got 1.72 kilograms there. 3.84 and this one which isn't going to make any difference yeah 3.84 kilos of these splash ram chips or eight pounds 7.2 ounces of them so we got almost a kilo more of flash ram chips than uh, the the mixed chips that Nick sent me these are all from a project that never happened got thrown into storage I picked them up for dirt cheap on the surplus market. I'll bet I can get a whole lot more gold out of these chips even though there's only like 30% mm, more of them than I got out of Nick's chips. Just because there's a whole lot less packaging here. These chips have a whole lot of legs. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot of gold bond wires in there. So I think this is going to contain a lot of gold. So let's get to processing and see. Now as for processing, I think I'm going to process them exactly like I did Dick's chips. Although, the legs on these chips are so short, I'm tempted to just go straight to incineration and then start treating them with acid because chewing the legs off with the, a muriatic acid bath isn't going to save much metal. But on the other hand, I'm leaving town in a few days. I'm not going to have time to process these before I go. I might as well just dunk them in the muriatic acid and let them sit till I get back. And then um, when I get back, there'll be a little bit less, um, a little bit less base metal to deal with with the exterior legs gone. Not a lot, but you know, with a few thousand chips, it adds up. So let me get these in the colanders and get the colanders in the muriatic acid bath and we'll get the legs chewing off. I've got the two colanders here, same ones I use with Nick's chips, and I'm just going to put these chips in the colanders. The holes in the colanders are too small to let the chips fall through, but not too small to let the liquid circulate around them. Boy, there's a lot of chips here. Sort of equalize it a little. My example chip in that one. So that's about the same amount in both. All right. Oh, my bags are flying away. So let me glove up and we'll get these in the muriatic acid bath. So here's the two buckets I used before. Still got the same liquid in them that I used for Nick's chips. I'm sure it's still got some potency to it. I'm sure it's not done. Huh. Get my strings arranged here so I can lower this basket in. There we go. Okay. Make sure my airline goes underneath the colander. There we go. Let me see. Let me turn that air bubbler on. I hear it 
I hear it bubbling. I don't see bubbles, but I hear them. They're probably coming up beside the colander over there. And some of the uh, chips are wanting to float. I think I can make them sink just by breaking the surface tension there. And let me get this other colander in this other bucket. Oh, and the air hose has to go in first. Underneath the colander. Go. Again, we got more floaty chips, but I'll take care of that. Maybe. There we go, they've all sunk. Let me get this air bubbler plugged in. Okay. So, we are rolling. Put the lids on loose again. Just like before. This one doesn't seem to be bubbling for some reason. Let's see if I can get it bubbling. And I hear bubbling, I just don't see it. Yeah, the bubbles are coming up on that side of the colander over there. Okay. So, lids on loose. Rocks to keep the wind from blowing it off. And we'll come back in a couple of weeks. And see what we got. I'll bet most of those little bitty legs on those little bitty ICs will be long gone. And then we'll move on to the next step, which should be incineration, then pulverization, gravity separation, and then we'll get the gold out. I don't know if these chips have any silver in them or not. We'll see. I got more silver than gold out of Nick's chips, even though I didn't get much of that either. But uh, I've got a feeling these chips are going to have a fair amount of gold in them. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm heading out of town. Well, it's been a few weeks. Went away on vacation. Did some actual gold mining out in Wyoming. Made a video of that. I'll put a link up in the uh, upper right-hand corner here for anybody who is uh, interested in seeing that. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to have a peek in here after a couple weeks now and see what we got. Still bubbling away down there. Ah, I'm not seeing any legs. Good. Not that, uh, you know, there was all that much metal in the legs on these anyway, but... It's a little less metal to process. Alright. So the other one should look just like this. But they've both been in exactly the same length of time. Let me wash some of the acid off. Let it drip down into the bucket. And, uh... Then we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be incineration. And, you know, I've shown all these steps in other videos, so I'm going to go through the ones I have. I've shown before, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. So, get these out of here, get them ready for incineration. I'll show you a little bit of incineration, a little bit of pulverization. And then if, uh, if I do things differently during the gravity separation, I'll show you that in detail. Otherwise, we'll speed through it, too. All right, same as in my other videos, so I'm going to go gloss over this. I've um, got a crucible full of the chips in my foundry furnace. Now, that's the biggest crucible I've got, but I've got so many chips it may take three, four, I don't know, maybe even five runs through the furnace to, uh, to uh, incinerate them all. So this may actually take a couple of days because I get started early in the afternoon. And I wouldn't be surprised if thunderstorms roll in in a couple hours, so I don't think I'll get them all incinerated today. So it'll probably take a couple days. Um, so I've got the, the crucible in there. I've got a piece of uh, steel brake line coming out of the crucible. That goes all the way down to the bottom to feed air to the bottom of the crucible. 
So we're going to burn these chips from the bottom up and from the top down in the foundry furnace. Uh, there's the lid for the furnace over there. And I've got a chimney to put on top to reburn the smoke. So let me reset the camera and uh, we'll start this up and get the first run going. Okay, let's get the foundry started. Now I'm, I'm going to start the burner up and start heating it up, put the lid on, put the chimney on. You may not be able to hear me once the thing lights up because it's kind of loud. Uh, I'm not going to start the air immediately. I'm going to wait until everything gets in good and hot in there. Then I'll just start a trickle of airflow from my air compressor through the brake line and start burning the chips from the bottom up. So uh, if I start the airflow too soon, I get too much smoke, which I don't want. got a really oxygen-rich fire going in there to help oxidize the chips from the top down so it doesn't want to stay lit until things get hot in there a little bit. Okay, now it's just a waiting game. Alright, I just started the airflow. Uh, everything looked like it was pretty good and hot in there. Just got a little bit of blue smoke coming out of the chimney. We got the fire tornado effect going on in the chimney. Every once in a while you can see flames looking out the top of it. It's reburning the vast bulk of the particulates in there so there's not a lot of smoke. And uh, this batch is almost done, I would say. Once the flames die down, I'll kill the main burner and just let the airflow go until they cool off quite a bit. Then I'll dump those out, put another batch in, see if I get another batch or two run before the afternoon storms start. Okay, I just turned the main burner off. Everything's good and hot. Uh, looks like most of the plastic has burned off, at least at the top. Got the airflow going. It's gonna keep going and keep burning the chips from the bottom up and incinerate any carbon that's left over in the crucible. And we should have some nice white incinerated chips when we're done. Just gonna let this go until it gets cool enough that I can actually get the crucible out of the furnace and then put another load in. Alright, just fired up the uh, second batch of chips. First batch of chips is out. They are still incredibly hot. I had them up on my workbench, but the workbench under the steel bowl started smoking, so I put them down on the concrete ground. So, uh, I'm trying to move them through as fast as I can to see if I can get two or three runs before the uh, summer thunderstorms start. Okay, it took a few days, but I got all of the chips incinerated. Um, it's been raining again. Um, it rained for like two days straight, so I couldn't do much out here, but finally they're all incinerated. They really are well incinerated. They're white on the inside. They pulverize real easy, but I'm going to run them through the blender like I normally do and make a fine powder out of them and I'm going to sift them out through the sifter. Going to do things a little differently this time. I said I was going to just sort of uh, breeze through this and not linger on it but I've been experimenting with uh, grinding chips wet. Somebody uh, in the comments on one of my previous videos said I should do this wet. And I thought, well, you know what, I've thought about doing it wet so let me, uh, let me experiment with it. And I found that uh, it actually worked pretty well. I think I got a better grind wet. The water, you know, swirls things around in there and gets them into the blade. I don't have to rock the mixer around or the blender around so much anymore. It just kind of works. So, uh, so I'm going to do this wet. Grind it all into a slurry. I don't have to rock it back and forth to get stuff in contact with the blade. And as usual, the oversized part's going to go back in. 
Now I'm not sure just how much metal is in uh, these little flash ram chips because I've never processed them in any large quantity before. I guess we'll find out. And we'll put another charge of these in here. Let me dip some of this water out and dump it back in. And we'll do it again. I'm going to wind up with two fractions here. I'm going to wind up with the super fine stuff that's going through the sieve and settling to the bottom is a fine powder. And I'm going to have the oversized fraction that won't go through the sieve. Looks like, yeah, there's a fair amount of metal there. It's like a lot of copper. Hopefully there's some gold-plated stuff in there. Stuff that just hasn't been broken up by the blades yet. So, like I said, we'll have two fractions. It's going to take me a while to go through all of these chips, so... I'll just probably skip ahead to when I'm done, so you don't have to uh, sit through it all. Well, I'm only part way through. Um, got a long way to go yet, but I thought I'd point out that one big advantage of doing it this way is no dust. There's no dust. So that's really nice. I mean, the blending, doing it dry makes a lot of dust. The sifting dry makes a lot of dust. I'm always having to wear a mask doing this. Hey, there's no dust doing it wet. That's great. Okay, that took a little while. Made a heck of a mess on the bench, but it's done. I've got uh, all the fine material that would go through the screen in here. I'll dump off this water in a second and show it and give you, give you a look at it. And the heavier stuff that would not go through the screen, even after several trips through the blender, wound up in this beaker here. And this looks like mostly copper. I'll give you a close-up look at this, too. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about why I do it this way. What's the point of the blending, the screening, the separation into two different, uh, um, the two different size parts? I'll talk about that. Let me dump this water off, and we'll take a look at some stuff. So here's all the fines that would go through the screen, and we got a fair amount here. So I'm going to have to do a gravity separation later on this to uh, reduce the amount. In fact, I may actually have to also get the sluice out and sluice this down a little bit because there's a lot of material there. Over here we've got the bigger stuff, which uh, would not go through the screen. And this has been pulverized in the blender three, four, five times, and it's mainly metal. It's not going to get any smaller, really. Maybe knock little bits off here and there, but it's mainly metal. And it looks like mostly copper. Uh, I've got a magnet here. It is blissfully... No, I wouldn't say it's steel-free, but there's not a lot of steel there, which is nice compared to, you know, random IC chips. There's not a lot of steel there. So it looks like mostly copper. I'm hoping there's a lot of silver in here, too. The last few batches of chips I did have a lot of silver in them, but I haven't done a lot of these flash rams, so we'll see. Okay, so what's all the point of the blending and the screening and the separation into two different size fractions? Well, the blending is easy. Uh, the blending is to break up the incinerated IC chips and liberate the gold bond wires inside. The screen, the purpose of it, is to gauge how well I have done that. Anything that will go through the screen, I figure, is going to be small enough to have released the bond wires. Um, if it's not small enough, it goes back. If it's not small enough to go through the screen, it goes back into the blender again. Uh, and this keeps up until stuff just isn't going to go through the screen. And you know, I, I didn't show the whole process of doing this, but I would stop 
Um, I think I stopped three times while I was doing this when I started accumulating a lot of oversized stuff in the screen and just ran the oversized stuff through the blender two, three, four times until it looked like I had gotten, you know, it broken up as much as I could and released as many of the bond wires as I could. Then the oversized stuff went in here and then I started with more IC chips again. And went through that until I was done with all the IC chips. So now I've got, you know, this fine mud here and this, this oversized fraction here. Now, a lot of people might say, well, why don't you just combine them? Because, you know, you're trying to do the same thing to both of them. And that's true. And it could be combined, I suppose. Um, but here's the thing. I'm going to have to do this in two beakers anyway, at least, because there's too much material here. So I might as well leave the oversized stuff in this beaker, and the stuff that went through the screen will go in a different beaker. After I reduce the volume a little bit, get rid of the fine ashy stuff, and just leave the heavies behind. Uh, but also I have found, now this stuff doesn't contain a lot of steel, but a lot of the IC chips I process do have a lot of steel in it, and a lot of the steel winds up in the oversized fraction. And the steel, when you dissolve this stuff in nitric acid, makes a horrible, rusty, sludgy, clay mess, which I think kind of inhibits um, the acids from getting to the stuff underneath it. So it's better to keep that in one place rather than spread it all through your whole process, number one. And number two, I found that the oversized stuff tends to contain the bulk of the silver. It doesn't break up as well as the... Uh, you know, it doesn't break up much better than the steel does. So the oversized stuff tends to contain the bulk of the silver. The smaller stuff contains the bulk of the gold. Now there is some gold in here. There's going to be some metal that's plated with gold in here. There's going to be some bond wires tangled up with all this other copper and silver in here that did not get liberated. So there is some gold in this oversized fraction. Most of the gold's going to be in here. There's going to be some silver in here that made it through the screen. But most of the silver is going to be in here. If there's silver, I don't know. I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done flash ram in any large quantity. There may not even be, you know, much silver in this stuff. We'll see. It may just be copper and gold. Okay. So that's basically, in a nutshell, why I do it this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to rinse this stuff a little bit, this oversized stuff a little bit with some distilled water. Just try and get some of the mud out of it, clean it up a little bit. I'm going to dump the dump the water I pour out of it into this over here just so I don't miss any bond wires that might come over. Just try and clean this up a little bit so we don't have so much of this gray mud down here, the ash from incinerating the IC chips. I'm not going to get it all out, but get get a fair amount of it out just so the, the liquid's not so opaque when I'm processing it. It's easier to see that way whether you've got, uh, actually that's tap water, I don't want to use tap water. So I've done this whole thing with tap water so far, but at the end what I want to do is I want to give the stuff a good rinse with distilled water too and get the chlorine out of it before we hit it with the nitric acid. Because one of my goals here is to dissolve the silver out of it. And if there's silver in it, I don't want to turn that silver into silver chloride. I just want to turn it into silver nitrate. And then we'll cement it out at a later step. Okay. So there we are. Relatively clean, oversized stuff. And then we've got a lot of this fine stuff which I need to uh, further process. We'll get to that next. Okay, time to do a quick gravity separation on this stuff and try to reduce the bulk of it by getting rid of the lightweight, ashy stuff in there. And this is this is the same as I've done in a lot of my videos, so I'm not going to linger on it. I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this stuff to a bucket. There's a lot of material here, and it's going to be much easier to handle in the bucket. Just need a larger container to hold it. Okay. So, let me let this settle for a few seconds and then 
pour off the liquid. Now the gold, the copper, the silver, anything else in here is going to be down in the sludge at the bottom here. It's not going to be in the liquid because it's going to settle out really quick. I mean gold is 19 times heavier than water. Even small pieces of gold aren't going to be suspended in the water for very long. They're going to drop right out. So let me agitate this stuff. Get some more water in there. Let me see if I can agitate it a little better. Stir it up good. Let it settle for a couple seconds. Gold's falling out of solution. Dump it over into this pan. It's okay this pan is overflowing. That's just dirty water. If anything good does make it in this pan, it's going to sink to the bottom of it. And only dirty water is going to overflow. So we're going to do this again. And we're going to keep doing this until the water is coming off pretty darn clear. probably already reduced the volume by about half what we started with. Give it a few seconds. Pour it up. And as you can see the water's already getting a little cleaner. So I'm just going to keep doing this until the water's pretty clean. I'll skip forward. I'll skip forward and show you what we do next. Okay, the water's coming off pretty clean now. So, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture anything that came over here and put it back in the bucket. So I'm going to pour this one into a catch pan. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this stuff. Just going to rinse it. Get the ashy stuff out of it. Oh, that really reduced the volume quite a bit just that first time. Mostly ashy stuff in here. Probably a little bit of heavies came over. Yeah, we're cleaning up now. That's great, greatly reduced the volume of stuff in here. Like, maybe only 1% of the heavy stuff from over there made it over into this catch pan. Or 1 one hundredth. So if I only lose a hundredth again out of this catch pan, that's only one ten thousandth. And at one ten thousandth, I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty sure I've caught the bulk of it. Okay, I'm going to wash this stuff back into the bucket over here. water off, just the bulk of it. Drain it into a catch pan just in case I accidentally dump a lot of the material in there. Okay, and they're done. Now I've greatly reduced the volume of the material, but there's still too much here. Um, I'd like to be able to do this in one or two beakers tops. And there's still a lot of material here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the sluice and run this stuff through the sluice and greatly reduce the material again by concentrating the heavies with the sluice. Show you that next. Okay, I got the little sluice out and I have a video about how I built this sluice and used it. I guess I built it about a year ago and I put out that video. Just just a few pieces of wood, a piece of, a piece of mat in the bottom for like wiping your feet and some uh, expanded metal mesh. Nothing much to it. Spray bar, a little pump down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this stuff through it. 
This is uh, the stuff I did the gravity separation on a bit ago. This is our this is our uh, remains of all those flash ram chips, but there's just way too much material here. So I'm going to run it through the sluice, and what my goal here is is to keep the metal in the sluice and get rid of the bulk of the silica, the, the icy dye remains. I want to get rid of the bulk of that. So I'm just going to slowly feed it through the sluice and the metal should collect up here near the top and then the uh, the rest of the stuff, the dye remains, should work their way down and out of the sluice over time and uh, everything that goes through the sluice is going into this bucket down here let me show you this bucket so there's a bucket at the end of the sluice so it's going to catch everything that comes out of the sluice and I can always rerun the stuff in the bucket again to make sure I catch all the values. And I may do that. I may just, you know, run all the stuff through the sluice once, clean the sluice out, and then run what's in here through it again just to make sure I catch all the good stuff. So this isn't going to take too long. 10, 15 minutes. Probably have the first load through. Do a quick clean out on the sluice and then uh, run what's in this bucket through it again. Just got to wait for the sluice to clear out a little bit between scoops. Got a lot of metal accumulating up here. So it's not just the gold. There's the copper, silver, whatever else was in there. Now my goal here is not to separate the gold from the base metals. I just want to separate all the metals from the IC dye material. So I just want to collect all the metals up here. And so far it's working. I don't really see any metal beyond about here. It's all collecting up here. We actually probably use a stronger water flow. But I think I'm up all the way. Maybe... Increase the angle of the sluice a little bit. Oh yeah, that's helping the dye, the dye debris move through it. Okay. So this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 10-15 minutes, just putting in, you know, a scoop, waiting for the sluice to clear out, and then putting in another scoop. Oh yeah, that's working much better. I actually see a few bits of gold here and there, but I'm catching a lot of copper, so that's okay. Yeah, there's some little flakes of gold here and there. All right, cool. So I'm just going to continue this and I'll be back when it's all through. Alright, slight change in plan. I've run, I don't know, maybe a little more than half of this material through there. And uh, the sluice is really getting clogged up with metal. I mean, we've got a big log jam of metal up here and I'm seeing metal as far as two-thirds of the way down the sluice. So I'm pretty sure I'm losing some into my catch bucket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the sluice clear out a little bit get uh, as much of the uh, icy dye remains out of it as I can and then I'm just going to do a clean out before I run the rest of the material through then I'll probably do another clean out and then I'll rerun this stuff through and uh, that should catch the bulk of it I'm thinking so gonna let it run a while do a clean out so I'm just sitting here letting the sluice run and as it runs and the, the silica dye material clears out, I can see that there's a lot more metal in this sluice than I thought. This thing is just loaded with metal. Looks like mostly copper. I do see the glint of gold here and there. Um, I'm not, you know, I haven't done these uh, flash ram chips before. They're very thin. They're like a half, three quarters of a millimeter thick. They're, they're very thin. There's not a lot of packaging there. I'm used to doing IC chips that are mostly packaging. The flash ram are mostly IC, they're not mostly packaging. So there's a lot of metal here. So even after, you know, I've only run like maybe a little more than half the stuff through. I'm thinking even after I run the, the second half through and uh, rerun this stuff to catch anything that I missed, which I think I've probably missed a lot because the metal's way down here. I'm thinking there's still going to be a whole lot more material than I can process in one batch. I'm probably going to have to do it in a couple batches. 
just because there's going to be so much metal here. Okay, I think that's enough. Let me unplug it. The water drain out, and I'll get set up. I just got to clean the, the sluice out, get all the stuff that's in and out of it, and then put it back together, and then do the next batch. Okay, I got uh, the second half of the uh, chip remains through. And once again, we have a big log jam of metal up here. Just waiting for the sluice to clear out a little bit, wash some more of the, the light, the icy chip remains through, and then I'll do a cleanup on it. Now, cleanup of a sluice is pretty simple. Um, basically, I have to take the sluice apart and wash everything in a bucket of water and get all the stuff that's caught in the mats and in the screen and inside the bottom of the sluice itself into that bucket. And uh, then when you drain off the water, you can see what you got. So that's what I'm going to do. And then after I do the clean out, I will rerun all this stuff and then clean it out again. I'm, okay, decided to show you a little bit of the second clean out here. Yeah, look at all the metal caught on that screen. Get it in this bucket. This bucket is about half full of water down here. wash the screen in that and all the metal comes off. Now I gotta get this mat out of the sluice. It's a tight fit. The wood has swelled because it's wet. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's almost all metal. I sure hope there's some gold in there along with all that copper. I thought I saw sparkles of something that looked like gold, but it's hard to tell in the sluice. The water's running through, it's sparkling in the little rivulets, but uh, I thought I saw some gold. pretty clean. Box itself in here and clean it up. There we go. So all the concentrates are in this bucket now. We gotta put the sluice back together and run everything in this bucket right here, the catch bucket, and uh, we'll see what we missed. I'll bet we missed a bit. So I'll show you that in a bit. All right, sluice is back together. Here's the stuff the catch bucket caught. So I would say. Yeah, it's probably more than double what's in the uh, clean-out bucket here, so... Yeah, probably more than two-thirds of what went through the sluice wound up in the clean-out bucket. But boy, a lot of what went through the sluice stayed in it. There's a lot of metal in here. Okay. Let's see what we missed. Rerun this catch bucket stuff. Not a lot in that first scoop. It's all washing through. Okay. Let's see. This is a very efficient little sluice. So as far as the metal was going down it, I wouldn't be surprised if some of it did make it into the catch bucket. It was just all piled up up here and I was seeing it as far down as two-thirds of the way down the sluice. Okay. It's going to take me a while to run this. And we'll see what we get. All right, everything from the catch bucket has been run through. And I'll tell you what, I saw a couple of wires, little bits of wire in here, metal, but they've disappeared right down into the ripples. 
I don't see any right now. So a little bit of metal made it through into the catch bucket, but not very much. There's no log jam up here. And it's all disappeared. I might see one little piece of metal right there. But it's all down in the ripples. So not very much wasn't caught the first time through. So I'm just going to let this run for a while and clear the debris out of the ripples and then uh, do another cleanup and then uh, we'll be done with this. We'll have our concentrates ready for further processing. And we will have dramatically reduced the volume again. The first gravity separation reduced it by probably two-thirds to three-quarters and this one is going to reduce it again by probably two-thirds or more. And uh, Every time we do that, we concentrate the metals, including the gold, in what's left. And less material to deal with, which is a beautiful thing. Alright, it's getting late in the afternoon, so after this is done, I get this cleaned up. We'll probably be ready to actually start treating this stuff tomorrow. I'll see you then. Okay, it's a new day and we're ready to start processing this stuff. Uh, I'm going to start with the oversized stuff and boy there is a lot of it in this beaker. Uh, wow, I hope there's some gold and silver in amongst this stuff. I don't know, I'm starting to, starting to be a little worried. You know, I thought I saw a few glints of gold, but I think if I was just, you know, processing random IC chips, of which I have a lot. Yeah, I've got a lot. Now there's a five gallon bucket full right there. That's not all of them. You know, if I was just processing random IC chips, I think I'd see a little bit more gold in the debris than I'm seeing in the debris of these uh, flash ram chips. So, you know, I keep saying I've never done these in any large quantity, so I don't know how much gold there really is in them. Hoping there's some. Anyway, okay, I put some distilled water in there. Got to have some place for the uh, metal salts that are going to be created when I put the nitric acid in to dissolve into. So, let me get the fume hood going. Let me get the hot plate on warm. Okay. See, this bottle of nitric acid is almost empty. But I've got more. Oh, look at that immediate reaction. Yeah, there's a lot of metal in there. But I better not put in any more right now. I'll wait for this to slow down. Yeah, I'll wait for that to slow down a little bit. Uh, I don't want to have a boil over. Now, speaking of nitric acid, uh, you know, I have videos about how to make concentrated nitric acid. I have videos about buying concentrated nitric acid. I'm working on some experiments for creating large quantities of dilute nitric acid because I don't always need concentrated nitric acid. I mean, I just put a bunch of water in this beaker and then added a little bit of acid to it. So what we got in here is dilute nitric acid. So dilute nitric acid will do a pretty good job of dissolving this metal. So I'm working on ways to make fairly large quantities of dilute nitric acid a lot simpler than getting out the big distillation setup and making nitric acid from scratch with concentrated sulfuric acid and sodium nitrate. So hopefully I'll have some good luck with that and there may be some videos on that in the future but if you want to make your own nitric acid you can still do it the way I've been doing it. You know follow the links in the upper right and uh, see how to make your own nitric acid. Anyway gonna let this cook for a while and uh, I'll end up uh, cracking open another night bottle of nitric acid in the not too distant future. I'm sure it add more to it because that's not going to be enough to dissolve all that metal. Okay, we're in territory here that I've covered many times before. Uh, I'm just going to keep adding nitric acid to this um, until the metal gets dissolved. At some point, I'll probably have to decant off the liquid in here. And, uh, you know, I'll wait till the reaction dies down, stops, the liquid clears. I'll decant it off, add some fresh uh, distilled water and nitric acid to it, keep it going, and keep doing that until basically all the metals dissolve. Um, I just put a little bit more dilute nitric acid in here. I had some left over from another experiment, 
Uh, I dumped it in there. We're going gangbusters again in there. But I'm going to keep that up. Um, like I said, I'll decant off the liquid. I'll test it and see if we're getting any silver or if it's all just copper. We'll see. I know there was a little bit of steel in there too, but not much. So there'll probably be a little bit of uh, iron oxide forming. We'll, we'll see. But uh, again, this is territory I've covered before in my other videos. So it's just going to take a while. It may take the rest of the day. It may take into tomorrow. And then once I get the oversized stuff done, I'll start working on the stuff that uh, went through the sluice. Well, this has been on for most of the day. You know, I put a couple of shots of nitric acid in it this morning. And then all heck kind of broke loose and I've just let it sit here. The reactions pretty much died down. I think there's a little boiling going on, but I don't think there's any more reaction. There's no more fumes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to decant off this liquid and we'll see what we got left in the bottom of the beaker. I'd be really surprised if all of the uh, metal has already gone into solution. I think what I'm going to have to do is after I decant this off, probably put some more water and nitric acid on it and leave it again. So let me, uh, let me get it decanted off. Alrighty, let's see what we've got here in the bottom of this beaker. I see lots of IC chip debris. I see a lot of obvious metal. Huh. Let me uh, slosh it around a little bit like this and look down here at the corner, see what it looks like. Okay, I, I still see some metal in there. What I'm not seeing though is gold. So I still see some metal accumulating over here, but I don't see any bits of gold. That's just kind of worrying. Now, there's a lot of copper in these chips for sure. I'm starting to wonder just how much gold's in them though. I guess we'll find out. So back in the fume hood. I didn't see that much metal left in there, so I'm not gonna hit it with a huge dose of nitric acid here just uh, just a little bit to see how the reaction goes get these leather gloves off leave it at that and see how it oh yeah bubbling okay so there's still, there's more metal in there than I saw. Okay. Maybe there's more gold in there than I saw. Okay. So we'll let this go. Like I say, it's getting late in the day. What I'll probably do is stir this a couple times, maybe give it another shot of acid before I go in the house for the night. And we'll see what we got in the morning. Well, it's the next morning. I did exactly what I said I was going to do with this. Um, yeah, I stirred it some. I put some more nitric acid in it before I went in the house for the evening and just left it on low heat all night. Um, there really wasn't much of a reaction when I put the second edition of nitric acid in. Um, I'm thinking the metal might be eaten up. It could be a little premature, but that's what I'm thinking, because there really wasn't much of a reaction. I think what I'm going to do is decant this liquid off and see what we've got in the bottom. First, though, I want to do a test to see if we've got silver in solution. This tap water. Put a little bit of it in this uh, beaker right here. Nice clear tap water. A couple squirts of this liquid in here and see what we got. Oh, I hope that's showing up. That is no longer clear. That's nice and cloudy now. That's the silver chloride in, or silver nitrate in there reacting with the chlorine in the tap water to make silver chloride. So we've got some silver, at least a little bit. 
Maybe not too much, but at least a little bit. So, okay. Silver is always a bonus. I'm just hoping we find some gold. Uh, I don't have my gloves on. Always wear your gloves. It's like your mom used to say, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, let me let me glove up before I do something stupid, and we'll see if I can find any uh, metal left in that. Okay, let me see if I can see any metal in here. time I did this I could see a little bit this time I really don't see anything anything at all including I don't see any gold which is kind of troubling okay so I might not have all the metal out of here but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little aquaregia in here and just see if we detect any gold in the aquaregia I'll give it the stannous chloride test see if there's any gold in there um, and maybe treat some of the stuff that went with the Seleuce and just see if there's any gold in it before I go full blown on it and waste a lot of that time and nitric acid on it see if there's any gold in it but first I want to see if there's any gold in this so muriatic acid going in Enough to tell us something. Let's see, I need clean pipette. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's still some copper and maybe some silver in there, but I'm getting eager to see if there's any gold in it, you know? That's really the point of this whole exercise. If I get some silver out of these chips, that's great, but really. I gotta see some gold in order to make this a worthwhile exercise. I mean, the silver I'm gonna recover from this isn't even gonna cover the cost of the nitric acid, probably, so. Let's see what happens. Alright, so I'm gonna turn the heat up on that a little bit and uh, see what, if anything, happens. Well, it's taken a good few minutes, but I'm starting to see some kind of reaction going on in there. Got some bubbling going on. Hopefully I'll see some fume production. But uh, I'll let that go for a while and then do a stannous chloride test on it. See if there is actually any gold in there. Okay, it's been a few more minutes. We've got a fair amount of bubbling going on and some brown fumes coming out. So something is going into solution in there. Hopefully gold. I'll let it go a little while longer and then do a status chloride test on it. All right, it's been about an hour and there's still a really vigorous reaction going on in there. Still a lot of fumes being produced. I don't quite understand what's going on. I haven't put any more nitric acid in it other than the two squirts you saw me put in. Now there was probably some residual nitric acid in the mud at the bottom because I didn't rinse the mud. So there was probably a fair amount of nitric acid in the mud. This is a really strong reaction though. I don't know what's going on in there, um, really. But my curiosity is getting the better of me. It's time to do a stannous chloride test and see if there's any gold in there. Or if this is just base metals going into solution. So let me get a little bit of this. And we'll see what we got here. Don't need that much. Just a drop or two. Down here on a spoon. Alright, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on, hopefully. Put a little light on the subject. 
and we'll put a little fresh stannous chloride on it and see what we get. Oh my, okay, I was not expecting that. That is a really, really strong, really dark, dark purple, almost black. That is a really strong indication of gold there. Okay, now I feel better. I feel like I'm not wasting my time here because I was afraid I was going to get skunked because I wasn't seeing any real gold in there. But uh, apparently there is. And it looks like there's a lot of gold. It's just hidden amongst the debris, I guess. All right, good. So, whew, that's a relief. There's gold here, good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna let this continue until the reaction stops. Cause uh, probably still got gold going into solution, I would imagine, since it's still bubbling away and fuming. Okay, so we'll let that go. Now I feel better about starting on the uh, on the stuff that went through the sluice. There's probably gold in it too. Okay, good news. I'm breaking for lunch on that good news note. Okay, went to lunch for a while, came back. Um, I think the reaction's pretty much done in here. Uh, it looks like it's a little bit of boiling going on. I don't really see any more fumes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move this to the back of the fume hood out of the way. I'm gonna grab a couple more of my big beakers and I'm gonna divide up the material that went through the sluice between the two beakers and I'll start treating them with the nitric acid just like I did with this stuff. We'll uh, dissolve off the bulk of the copper and other any other base metals in there and then we'll hit that stuff with aqua regia and see, much, see if we get some good gold out of it.